Um, thank you so much for joining this morning. I can see everyone's coming on, so we're just going to take a couple of minutes. Thank you so much for making the time, which in what is a very dreary morning, morning here in Sydney, unfortunately, but hoping the weather's a little bit nicer where you guys are. Looking forward to talking a bit about fashion. Um, for those that are joining, just a bit of a run of the day, we have got a fashion um, portion of the webinar to deep dive, deep dive a bit into the category um, from now until 10. And then from 10 to 11, uh, we have more of a horizontal webinar, which is going to talk through um, and it'll be relevant to anyone kind of selling on eBay. So we're going to run through eBay insights tools. We're going to run through marketing tools. Uh, and then we've also very um, honored to be joined by the Google team who are going to talk a little bit about winning the retail marathon um, and also a little bit about Google shopping and how you can make the most of that for your business. Um, I can see the attendee number is climbing, so I'm going to give it a couple more seconds. Um, and then I'm going to throw it over um, to Anne-Marie in a minute. Um, but yes, thank you so much for making the time. I hope you've all got a coffee. Hope you've all got somewhere to write your notes, whether it's a notepad or a Word doc open on your screen. Um, but really, really happy to have you join. I think we'll be good to go, Anne-Marie. So I might throw over to you. Thanks so much, Ria. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning or wherever you're dialing in from um, across Australia or maybe you're global. Um, we are super excited to have um, some time with you this morning. We're going to spend 30 minutes together um, as a fashion team, and then we are going to move into um, what Ria was referring to before, which is a broader workshop, still a lot of great examples and um, for you to learn from in, in the second half of the, the webinar. Um, before we jump into it, I would like to give um, an acknowledgement of country to open up the webinar. Um, I acknowledge the traditional owners of the various lands on which we work today and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people participating in this meeting and webinar. I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and recognize and celebrate the diversity of Aboriginal peoples and their ongoing cultures and connections to the land and waterways of Australia. We are really excited to bring this session to you today, just in time for peak trading session. Um, I'd love to know where you're dialing in from today. So if you can use the chunk fa ch chat functionality to um, describe where you are, what city are you zooming in from today? And also we'd love to know, do you sell on eBay full time or is this a side gig or a side hustle for you? Um, Throw it in the chat. Um, I'm from um, dialing in from Sydney, from eBay HQ um, on Gadigal Country um, with a team across a number of rooms here today, as well as our friends from Google. Um, great to see you. Thank you. Welcome. Um, it's really great to see so many people all the way from Perth. Hi, Rob. Um, Danella in Nelson Bay, um, a side hustle in Adelaide. This is so great to see where you're from. Um, at eBay, we get to see your amazing stores every day and um, get to see you trading on our platform, but it's really great to find out where you're all dialing in from. Um, so just to first, uh, I'll go through the agenda first and what we're going to be talking about. Um, we are going to talk and give you some insights from a fashion perspective. So as you know, eBay is the OG of re-commerce. Um, we've been really working really hard as a team um, on building that profile within Australia um, to bring more people to the platform to enjoy the listings that you are um, bringing onto the platform for us. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about some buyer insights that we've been seeing, um, as, well, as well as some really top tips on conversion drivers. Um, we're also going to show you a sneak peek of an eBay um, pre-love partner program that we're launching next year. And then finally, there'll be some times for questions um, from, from you guys. So first of all, um, how to make the most of the webinar Use the chat functionality when you can. This will be on intermittently. We do have a couple of questions and some opportunities um, for you guys to interact with us. Um, we also, there will be some times for um, conversations via the um, Zoom chat functionality as well. So please make sure you use that. Um, and obviously we'll be starting to moderate the questions too. So please use the Q&A function. Um, finally, at the very end of the seminar today, we are going to um, provide an opportunity to give us to give you, for you to give us feedback. Um, and we'll also be emailing that out to you. Um, so we can really make sure that what we're offering um, our eBay sellers is really vital information. So first of all, I wanted to just give a brief introduction and let you know the people that are working behind the scenes at eBay to drive fashion um, in Australia. Um, so myself, I've been at eBay for over three years, worked in various different functions across the company um, and am now heading up the fashion team in Australia. 
it's honestly my dream job. I love working um, with the team and specifically with the sellers. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm living the dreams. Very, very exciting. Um, on my team, I have Jerry, who's going to be talking to you today. Jerry is has a background in seller account management. She is able to answer a lot of tricky questions that we get from our sellers. Um, Jerry is our category trading manager, and she runs a lot of our B2C programs. Um, we also have Amy, who's going to be talking to you today. Amy is our brand coordinate, brand and partnerships coordinator. Amy's been um, really working hard and understanding um, what it, what's driving um, customers within this within this space. So she's going to do a short presentation on that today. Um, and Natalie rounds out our team. Natalie's not on the call today. She works a lot in our, our marketing and also our um, C to C seller space. So that's the team. Um, as I said, I am a big fan of um, buying and selling fashion myself on eBay. Um, today, I'm wearing a Mato top that I got from one of our sellers called the Harmonic, who are based out of Byron Bay. Um, I just love being able to, to shop designer fashion um, at a really cost efficient price. Um, but we have a quiz to start it. So use the chat function um, to give us your answer. How often is a pre-loved women's dress sold on eBay? Is it A, every 10 minutes, B, every six minutes, or C, every two minutes. I'll just wait for a couple more answers. Right, you've been studying up, that's correct. It is C, every two minutes. So demand is just huge for um, dresses on the platform and um, particularly leading into event season, we're getting more and more customer, customer demand for, for fashion. Um, I think it's really reassuring to see that those numbers are continuing to improve. Um, we've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes on really driving people to site to be able to shop and find the things that they're looking for easily. Um, we're just going to give a quick uh, overview of what um, what we've been seeing on eBay over the last couple of, uh, sorry, over the last 12 months. So one and two online shoppers use ebay.com.au. No surprise, eBay has um, been around for 25 years. We still have a really dominant position within the market within the market here in Australia. Um, every two minutes, a designer luxury brand is searched for on eBay.com.au. So huge, huge demand still um, coming into into eBay um, for 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 fashion, um, and we have over 10 million unique monthly visitors on eBay. Um, so it's continuing to to build demand. What we're seeing is it's coming from a couple of reasons. Um, most, most recently, obviously, the cost of living has really impacted um, people's purchase behavior. So we're really seeing an uptick right now in um, re-commerce, um, as well as sustainability, often wanting people wanting to shop within their values, and also just looking for really great, great quality items at a good price. Um, so what we've been doing at eBay over the last um, couple of years, globally and also locally, is really trying to change the perceptions of pre-loved. Um, within the industry and also within the minds of consumers with the ultimate goal of driving more eyeballs and more people to site to search for those items that they're looking for. We often we are also seeing people that are coming for the first time to eBay to clear out their wardrobe and sell those items themselves. But what we do see is that this actually brings them out um, to buy more on site as well from in that fashion category and more from our sellers like you. So what we have been doing over the last couple of years um, is really trying to change that perception. So we launched Authenticity Guarantee um, over, that's now across multiple categories globally. In Australia, that program is across sneakers, handbags, and also designer luxury accessories. It's been a really, really strong um, program for us as people really want to trust what they're buying is legitimate. We also became a patron of the Australian Fashion Council last year. We've been working really hard with that council on um, understanding where fashion brands need to intersect with the secondary marketplace um, and also talking to people within their network. For the last three years, we've also sponsored Australian Fashion Week. You might have seen if you were able to get there this year, we had a really great activation on site where people were able to um, really get an understanding of the types of inventory that sellers like yourself are bringing to site. So we really feel it's our job to be able to talk to the wider consumer base about just how um, amazing the types of um, products are that they're able to shop secondhand on eBay. Um, also globally, eBay Ventures, which is our venture capital arm, have been really investing strongly in being able to um, either invest or acquire businesses that help us grow this, um, this sector even more. Globally, we've acquired the company Certa Logo, which is a digital product passport company based out of Milan. And then also locally, we've invested in a um, rental, peer-to-peer -peer rental um, platform called The Vault. Uh, there's some exciting announcements to come soon on what we're doing with them. This year as well, we also announced our first um, inaugural 
circular fashion fund winners. Um, we had a huge reception um, when we put the call out for funding here. We are about to open funding next month. So please um, keep your eye on um, all your comps from eBay when we start announcing that. Um, it's a really exciting program where we um, offer funding and mentoring to businesses that are driving fashion circularity. This year as well, we also partnered with Oriton, the luxury premium brand, um, heritage brand out of Australia, um, where we partnered with their customers to be able to get them to start selling and start selling those items on eBay um, and then driving back to store as well to shop again. And then globally, you may have seen some really exciting initiatives that um, have run over the over the last few months. Um, we did a collaboration with Balenciaga at um, Paris Fashion Week, and also most recently have done a collaboration with Sir Elton John, where we auctioned off his wardrobe um, on, on eBay.com. So some really exciting initiatives globally that's really helping to drive customer demand on site. Um, also, as well, we have been working with a lot of um, media outlets in Australia to really drive that conversation around re-commerce and get people to really think differently about how they shop. Um, one of the partnerships that we have done is with digital publication Fashion Journal. I really urge you to go on and have a look at their site. We were able to partner with them and launch a pre-love fashion vertical, um, really speaking directly to that audience in a way that's authentic to them um, on channels that they engage with. So jump on that today. We've had over a million impressions on that um, pre-love fashion vertical since it launched um, a month ago, and we've reached over 150,000 users. Again, ultimately, we're trying to drive them to site so they can um, so they can search for the, the, the pieces that they love. Um, and we also have been working with our male audience. Um, we have done some content with Man of Many, and there's a few other um, pieces of content about to launch over the next couple of months. And then also, if you are a podcast listener, I recommend that you download Stylish. Um, we've been partnering with Stylish um, for, for a couple of months now. They've had over 130,000 Spotify downloads. Um, and again, it's really about working with um, partners that we know connect with our key audiences to drive to site. That's a whistle stop tour on what we've been doing at eBay to drive um, customers to site. Um, I'm now gonna hand over to Amy and Amy's gonna talk to you about some buyer insights that we've been seeing. Thanks, Amy. Awesome, thanks, Emery. So we actually did some research with Canter on what we're seeing in the Australian market and what consumers are doing in this pre-love fashion space. And we've seen that Australians' consideration to buy and sell secondhand clothing is actually the highest it's ever been. And the market is already sizable. We've got over half of Australians um, have already bought pre-love fashion online um, in the past year with the thrill of the hunt and finding a really good price for their items being their main driving factor for purchasing secondhand. Additionally, 61% would also consider selling secondhand. So that notion of buying an item, knowing that they can sell it as well, like due to quality and the brand that they're purchasing from is really on the rise. Um, and they're buying because they know that they can sell and they're selling because they know that they can buy again. Um, so this is only forecasted to keep growing with nine in 10 consumers saying that they're likely to buy pre la fashion in the future again. And how is this showing up? So the consumer behavior that we um, gained from the Canter research, where we found that Australians are really transitioning away from fast fashion and becoming more mindful shoppers in terms of opting for brands driven by quality um, and status. So they're choosing um, brands that align with their ethos and also with the cost of living, they're choosing um, platforms like eBay Marketplace to um, purchase um, cost-effective items. So how this is showing up in the community is it's actually driving a massive culture community behind pre-love fashion. People love looking for the thrill of the hunt, the finding a bargain and looking for items that have sold out from their favorite brands. It's also allowed um, consumers to have a lot of accessibility to brands that they may not be able to afford before. So they're saving up to buy a designer secondhand clothes or buy, buying um, items um, in a luxury space, but at a price point that they now can afford. And finally, buying secondhand for them is just a way to showcase their personal style. They're looking for a way to stand out and using pre-love fashion as an expression of their personality is a way to do so. Especially for Gen Z, there is no stigma attached to buying secondhand clothes. It's actually a really cool trend to say that you found it thrifting or you bought it secondhand, especially when it's brand. So they're just kind of the peak insights that we got from our amazing Kantar research. And Jerry's going to give you a bit of insight into how to really scale um, your store um, during this peak period. Thanks, Amy, and good morning, everyone. Um, now, continuing on with research into buyer behaviours, I want to take you deeper into what drives our customers to choose pre-loved items over new and also highlight some of the challenges that they face. So starting with the table on the left, 
Firstly, the interest in pre-loved fashion is absolutely underway. Significant 81% of the respondents to our survey find it more affordable to shop pre-loved, which allows them to stretch their budgets further, of course. Um, additionally, 54% are driven by the hunt, like Amy said, uh, for unique items. And I mean, who doesn't want to find that item that no one else has? Um, whilst for 38%, it's about shopping their favourite brands and 35% choose pre-loved fashion to support sustainability efforts. However, looking in the middle column, shopping for pre-loved fashion isn't without its hurdles. Uh, and our respondents highlighted several barriers to purchase with 71% concerned about items being in poor condition. Sizing can also be tricky as 65% find it difficult to assess fit properly and concerns about cleanliness and authenticity are notable as well with 43% worried about cleanliness and 42% cautious of counterfeit items. Additionally, the same percentage finds it difficult to return items as well. Then on the right side table, to build trust in our pre-loved offering and experience, Buyers emphasise the importance of clear images and descriptions, with both valued at 75% of respondents. Now, of course, these elements are crucial in helping buyers make informed decisions. So this all makes complete sense, right? And also seller ratings play an important role here, with 69% of buyers looking to these as a mark of credibility and quality. And of course, understanding these insights help to us uh, as a business uh, to continuously improve the eBay shopping experience and ensures that the platform rem remains a trusted and preferred choice for buying pre-loved fashion. Next slide, please. So now that we understand the why from the research, let's dive into the what in terms of the key categories and the top brands we see from searches and purchases on eBay. And I hope that understanding these will help you align your listings to buy demand and optimize your sales strategy. So starting at the top with our key categories, uh, for women's wear, it's dresses like Anne-Marie spoke about, tops and skirts. Uh, these lead the charge, uh, especially at this time of year. Whilst with men's wear, uh, it's shirts, jackets and jeans that are key. And of course, sneakers and athletic shoes uh, continue to be massively popular for both our casual and sports enthusiasts. And of course, it's also that time of year when event and party wear are at the top of buyers lists, along with accessories like bags, wallets, belts, and sunglasses, which are not only perfect for wearing, but also gifting during the festive season. Now, moving down the page to our top brands, which include local and international favourites. So brands like Age uh, or Camilla for a distinct Australian flavour to global giants, the ones that we know like Nike and Gucci. All of these brands are highly sought after and drive buyers to our platform. And of course, understanding these popular categories and brands gives you an advantage as it allows you to tailor your inventory and marketing efforts to match what our buyers are actively searching for. And this alignment not only increases your visibility, but also enhances your potential for higher sales. But of course, this is only part of the picture um, that you could see on the previous slide. There are also uh, so many brand, other brands that sell well on eBay, and you'll learn in the scale-up section of today's webinar how to use eBay's research tool, Therapy, for more insights on that, so stay tuned. Next slide, please. <laughs> But for now, let's shift our focus uh, to optimising your listings for maximum impact. And on this slide, we're diving into my top five conversion drivers. Uh, and these can significantly enhance your sales performance, not just for peak period, but all year round. So first on the list is uh, no-brainer, strong listing titles and key attributes. Now, the power of a well-crafted title cannot be overstated here. It's your first impression and a critical search factor. So make sure that your titles are clear, descriptive, and include key attributes that buyers are searching for. So that's things like gender, brand, style, material, colour, and size. 
And I know that this might seem simple, but you'd be absolutely surprised at how many listing titles don't include these important elements. And um, really, <laughs> simple titles like blue dress and size 10 just don't cut it. So you really do need that additional detail to get cut through. Then to number two on the list, it's clear images and realistic island conditions. And these kind of go hand in hand with strong titles. Um, and in basic terms, buyers want to see the, and understand what they're getting. So using high quality images that are accurately um, reflecting the condition of the island is important. And spell that condition out in your description too. So for instance, if, you, um, if your item has marks, if, if it's missing buttons or if it's got a pulled stitch, uh, pull that out in the description because it's that kind of detail and transparency that builds trust with your buyers and, of course, reduces returns. Then, number three on the list is competitive pricing. And when it comes to pricing your items, the best advice I can give is to price smartly. Uh, and by that, I mean keeping an eye on the market and adjusting accordingly. The right price definitely attracts more buyers. And the easiest way of checking is by searching for your item on eBay and seeing what others are listing similar items for. This allows you to be competitive. Um, and you can also see details within our TerraPeak tool, which as I said, will be discussed later. Okay, number four, driver is free shipping and returns. And this is a major decision factor for buyers. Offering free shipping can significantly increase your appeal and a hassle-free return policy will reassure buyers, making them more likely to purchase from you. So definitely something to consider. And lastly, uh, especially important for this time of year is handling time and the holiday mode. Quick handling times show your commitment to customer service, plain and simple. And um, also don't forget during peak periods to adjust your handling time and holiday settings to manage buyer expectations and prevent any of those hiccups that we all hate. Uh, if increased demand is impacting your handling times or if you're planning on having any time off over Christmas or New Year, make sure that you either extend your handling times to reflect that or place your store into time away mode. Okay, so that's my top five. I know that was brief, uh, but going deeper into these drivers uh, yourself and implementing them will not only boost your visibility but also enhance your um, enhance buyer confidence and increase your conversion rate so take the time to review your listings and stay on the zoom for the next session when the team will go through some of these in more detail and also visit the helpful pages that the team will share in the chat for more information okay so now it's time for another quick quiz and uh, as you would have seen on my previous slide, maybe, <laughs> Aussie brands Zimmerman, Alame and Scanlon Theodore are some of the most popular. And the question is, how often are the three brands searched for on eBay AU? Is it once every 10 minutes, once every two minutes, or once every six minutes? Let us know what you think in the chat. Okay. Drum roll, please. The answer is on the next slide. <laughs> the answer is every two minutes. One of those brands is searched for on eBay. So congrats to those that got it right. Now, um, lastly, before our Q&A section, I want to share a preview of an exciting opportunity. It's the eBay Pre-Love Partner Program. And this initiative is designed to elevate your visibility and sales by showcasing your commitment to quality and customer satisfaction. And the program is open to eligible fashion business sellers who meet certain criteria. And these standards are crucial for converting potential buyers and include things like being a top rated seller, offering 30 day returns and ensuring your listings have strong, clear images uh, as well as other metrics. But by joining the program, you not only boost your store's visibility with eBay's blue tick badge, but you also build trust with buyers who are looking for high quality secondhand fashion. So we launched it this year. We will, uh, we will expand it into 2025 to sellers achieving over $100,000 of sales per year. Um, uh, and if you're interested in scaling up your business and gaining more exposure, then stay tuned for more details uh, and make sure to add your interest in the webinar feedback when it comes through.
Now that's it from me as I hand back over to Anne-Marie. Good luck with your peak season and I hope it's your most successful yet. Thanks so much, Jerry. Um, always great to hear about um, the, the latest information that's coming through. Um, we, as I said, sorry, as we said at the beginning of the session, make sure you continue to stay on this webinar because um, we do go into a lot more detail around optimization um, in the next session. I'm going to hand to Ria for a couple of questions that have come through now to, to facilitate those. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. And thank you everyone for being so awesome in the chat and the Q&A. It makes these webinars a whole lot better and makes sure that everyone gets heaps out of it, which is what we want. Um, we haven't had a ton of questions and we are running out of time, but we did have a few that I'm going to, some answer myself and some I may throw over to the team. So um, at some point, Jerry and uh, Amy, if you want to chuck your cameras on, then we can we can feel the Q&A together. I did have a question about the um, recording. And yes, we are recording the session and we will find a way to post it or share um, either the slides or the recording itself after this session, because we know that not everyone can make it. You might have to duck off to drop kids to, kids to school or put the washing on or whatever it is. So we'll make sure that we uh, send all of the information out after. So um, you can look forward to that. Um, there was a question um, team around uh, whether eBay have any data in terms of whether um, free shipping um, generate sales. I think I can safely say that I, I don't have an exact number on that, but I do know that free shipping does drive um, a hell of a lot of conversion on the site. And that and the, a lot of the recommendations that you'll hear from the team today, whether in the past session or the one coming up, are all driven by data here. We won't give a seller a recommendation unless we know that it's actually going to drive sales conversion for you and some velocity on the platform. So I don't know whether team, you had anything to add on that, but I do recommend um, free shipping as an option. And uh, often having express shipping um, as an upgrade is a great option as well. So you don't, we understand offering express shipping for free isn't always in everyone's budget. Um, so offering it at a reasonable cost, um, you can find that buyers when they really need something for a wedding or an event, they will pay that upgrade cost for express um, when they really need it in time. So that would be um, my recommendation. Um, we did have a little bit of feedback team in terms of returns when it comes to um, pre-love fashion, because obviously sometimes things don't fit um, and things like that. So I'm not sure whether you had any commentary around that, but I think we'll, it's feedback that we're definitely going to digest as a team and and take on board um, as well. That was literally all that came through the chat, guys. If there's any other questions, let us know. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much for joining. It's been amazing to run through all of this with you. Hopefully everyone learned something, whether it was a really cool stat or a bit more about how the fashion team are driving amazing experiences for buyers and for sellers here in AU. And marie any Final thoughts before we move on? No, I'm, I'm actually answering a couple of these um, questions as well as they come through. So um, keep an eye on that Q&A um, session. Um, yes, this will be recorded. Um, we are working on a way to get this to you. Um, we'll likely use your sign up that you um, that you use when you, uh, when you confirm this webinar to send you a recording. Um, Keep an eye on Seller Community and also Seller Scoop over the next month. We'll also include some um, links um, that have and some of the information that we've shared today for you too. Um, and yeah, stay on the stay on the line if you can. Thank you again for being um, an eBay seller. As you know, we we don't succeed um, unless you succeed. We're here to help you. So it's been really great to meet you all um, today. Um, please fill out the feedback survey at the end. Tell us what you want to hear about next year and we can hopefully make this um, a more regular um, occurrence for you. Thanks again. Thanks, everyone. So we're going to take a quick break um, and then move on to the seller um, scale up, which is the more um, horizontal webinar. Um, I really recommend you stay on. Um, there's some awesome uh, topics coming through. We're going to talk through free eBay marketing tools that you can use, especially going into peak season. Um, they're all free if you have a store subscription. So there's no extra cost um, to using any of them other than, of course, the cost of running the marketing itself. Um, we're going to talk a bit through insights tools. So what are all the free insights tools that are sitting with an eBay system that you can use to optimize your inventory? And then again, we're very, very honored to have um, the Google team joining us as well, live from eBay HQ. Um, they're going to talk a little bit about what um, is different this peak season compared to others and how you can win that marathon against your competitors. Um, and they're also going to talk a bit through Google Shopping. Um, as we all know, Google Shopping is a super powerful tool. So way a lot of buyers shop at the moment, especially when they're figuring out what they want and they're a bit um, higher in the funnel. Um, the team are going to talk a little bit through how you can optimize your eBay listings and optimize your business generally to be showing up when a buyer searches for something in Google um, to make sure your inventory is right at the top. 
So stay with us. Uh, I'm going to pop off camera for a second just to make sure all our speakers are ready uh, and we'll be kicking off in a few minutes. So grab your coffee, grab your croissant, grab your breakfast um, and we'll be on in a second. Hello, hello, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> um, awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I can see there's a couple of people filtering in. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes, maybe a couple of seconds before we kick off. Um, thank you all for making the time this morning. I know it is dreary, at least um, here in Sydney, at least. Um, but hopefully it's a little bit warmer where you are. Um, thank you so much for making the time to join us this morning. We've got an amazing lineup for you guys. Um, if you have attended one of our events this year, whether it be Retail Fest or Online Retailer, you may have seen some of these slides before, but I promise it's still worthwhile sticking around. Um, if you haven't been to those events, um, you're absolutely in the right place. We know peak season is one of the most um, busy as well as op like the season with the most opportunity for online shoppers and for, for sellers as well. So we wanted to make sure that you guys were really ready um, to make the most of the peak season this year. So we're running this webinar to make sure that anyone across Australia, no matter who you are, where you're dialing in from and what your business is, that you've got all of the tools um, to really kick some goals this peak season. Uh, and we really appreciate your time and for joining us today. I can see this, the attendee number is still going up. So I'm going to just do a bit of an intro before we kick off. Um, and I'll throw over to James in a second uh, as our first speaker. So just a bit of a run through of what the agenda looks like today. Um, James, as you can see on the screen, is going to talk a little bit through um, successful listing optimization and how you can use eBay's insight tools to really supercharge your growth on eBay. Um, he's also going to talk a little bit through Terra Peak, which is one of our free um, insights tools on eBay as well. Um, then he's going to throw over to Charlene. Um, she's going to talk through your eBay marketing toolkit. So what are all the tools available to you at any given time that you can use to be promoting your inventory? And the great part about it is there's so many different tools that each of them has a specific use and a specific um, strategy uh, for your marketing as well, which is amazing. So we're not by any means saying you have to use all of them, um, but there are ones that will really suit your business and suit some of your inventory. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And then we're very happy to have the Google team joining us again. They've been kind of following us along some of our events this year. They presented with us at Retail Fest and again, an online retailer in Sydney. Um, and they've very kindly agreed to join this webinar as well. So we can... Um, run you guys all through their amazing, amazing insights when it comes to peak period and making the most out of it, um, as well as Google Shopping and how you can make sure that your inventory is showing up. Um, time permitting, we will have hopefully some time for questions. So just in terms of how to make the most uh, of the webinar today, if we flick to the next slide. Um, there you go back, Amy One. <laughs> 
it's all live, guys. You're getting everything, uh, uh, getting everything raw. So um, that's all good. Just in terms of making the most of the webinar here today, we have got a chat and a QA and a function. We leave the chat function off for most of the webinar, but it will be on for hosts and panelists. If you're having any issues with our audio or anything going wrong on the screen, as always happens with Zoom, um, feel free to just chuck it in there and myself or one of the speakers will see it. Um, but if you do have a question, we do have a Q&A function. It's all anonymous. You can chuck your question in there. We have a bunch of people sitting um, very magically in the background of the Zoom call who can be answering questions as we go. And if we have some time at the end, we'll try and answer some of them live as well. As I said, we are live and it is all based on the Zoom technology. So if things go wrong, just roll with us. Um, I'm sure we'll make it work. And the main thing is we want you guys to learn something today. So um, I'm sure you've heard enough of me now. I'm gonna throw it over to James. He's gonna talk a little bit about how to make the most of eBay's listing tools. Thanks, Ria. So, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. I guess just introduce myself. I'm James. I lead the seller acquisition. So I guess the team that bring new sellers onto eBay. Um, what I'm going to talk about today essentially is a couple of things. So I think just to start, we'll sort of set the scene in what is a successful listing, but then we'll also just look at some tools um, that you can leverage to basically grow your store to have a look at what is working and what isn't working and sort of then make some decisions about what you need to do to grow your sales. So I guess just to start, what makes a successful listing or what are some of the data points on eBay that are sort of important? Um, and I guess it, depending on what you sell, it, this varies a little bit. If you're somebody that sells sort of pre-loved and one-off inventory, some of the things you need to consider a little bit different to multi-variation listings and sort of, um, I guess, a fixed price inventory. But I guess most of the same things apply to both people. So these are things like making sure that you have a really, really well-structured title. And I think Jerry um, previously went into this a little bit if you caught the webinar before, but I think that's one of the more important things to get right, making sure that you have the right sort of keywords buyers are looking for there. And again, what you sell here will vary how you sort of structure your title. If you're selling like a branded product, you definitely want to have like the brand name in the title. So that's because that's obviously something buyers are going to be searching for. If your product's a little bit less brand specific, then you want to have more keywords probably and attributes about the product. But I think the most important thing is just to make sure you include the sort of things buyers are going to be looking for for the product because the title is one of the more important things that are going to drive the search on eBay. Um, and then category is really important as well. So when buyers do a search, they'll get prompted with a category. So making sure that you have the right category so when they click that, you don't show up in the wrong one is really important and you still show up in the search. You can list with two categories as well. Um, if you find that your products sort of sit between two categories, that is an option. But I think it's really the main call out here is just make sure that you've got the product in the right category. Um, and then, you know, there are some things you can do like volume pricing as well that you'll see on, a, on this listing here that can sort of help with things like basket size and encouraging buyers to buy more than one of your item. Whether that's applicable to your product really depends on yeah what you sell. Like if it's something that buyers will tend to buy multiple items of, then it's good to have something like that on the listing. Um, then there are some other things you can do as well, like order discounts instead. But I think it's any more of these sort of things just make your listing more attractive as well to buyers to sort of stand out. Um, and then item specific, something that applies to, to both here will be like this attributes about the item, making sure that you've got as many of the values that eBay are looking for importantly as well, because these attributes um, all relate to the search on the side of, um, yeah, on the side of the search whenever you do a search there, which I'll show you in a couple of slides as well, what they sort of relate to when we actually look at a search. But I'd say making sure that you have as many of these attributes as possible is really important because they will just help buyers more likely to find your item, particularly when filtering in search. And then the other thing you'll see there as well as images. That's probably one of the most important things in terms of making buyers want to click on your, on your listing when they see it in search and then want to purchase it. So you have up to 24 images that you can add, but also product video now as well. So if you have video of your, of your items, I would definitely recommend adding that because it can definitely help a lot with just driving base conversion and just getting people to click on it. Um, and then, yeah, just more any of these sort of things that you can add to your listing that just sort of help highlight it to buyers or um, highlight that you're offering something will, will definitely help a lot. Um, things like being able to make offers as well for a pre-loved inventory or something where you, um, yeah, where you give the buyer the option to negotiate. And then, yeah, like also the trust signals as well. So if you can do things like eBay Plus or um, any anything you can sort of do, like eBay programs that will sort of highlight you as a good seller, that will just help as well sort of make your inventory show up as something that's trusted and make a buyer more likely to purchase it. 
Um, and then, yeah, selling history is something that really does impact um, search results as well. Obviously, the more your item sells, then this is more relevant for a, for a, like a fixed price inventory, the more likely it is to sort of show up higher in search. So you want to make sure that you're not ending items when they, uh, like if they go out of stock, you want to make sure that you've got the out of stock option enabled so that your inventory just gets hidden if you're going to be reselling it so that, yeah, you maintain that selling history, which will just help with search performance as well. Um, and then, yeah, things like offering free express shipping is really, really like will just help as well with highlighting, yeah, a qualifying for eBay Plus, but also just highlighting your listing as offering some additional services as well. Um, and then if we scroll down on a listing, you'll see that there's the the shipping section here as well. So like what is the best practice here would be to offer a free standard shipping service where possible and then also offer a express shipping service. That doesn't have to be free necessarily like in the example here, but um, we would generally say that buyers like to have lots of options. So, you know, there's some people that want to get the item quickly. So you want to make sure that you're then offering an express service to capture those buyers. But then, you know, there are other buyers that are obviously prepared to wait a little bit longer for the item. That's where offering like a standard option is good there. Um, Again, I mentioned eBay Plus. If you can do this, this will help you qualify for that program as well, which will just help you with your listing stand out a little bit more. Um, also, your handling time, like making sure that you offer a handling time that's accurate so buyers are getting things within their expected time. But also, so again, if you're getting items out quickly, you want to make sure that you're showing that to buyers. And then, yeah, returns. If you offer returns, we would recommend that you get, you enable that on your returns policy. Um, it will help with search as well. Like if that's something that you you can offer, that buyers will just be able to see that, and it just helps with converting the listing. So I mentioned the item specifics side of things before, um, and I guess the like looking at a listing, you can see there on the left a, a bit of a screenshot of that there, one that's filled out well. But then also on the right, you can see a bit of a screenshot of a revised listing and some data on the searches. And the reason I'm showing that as well is it's quite good to be able to revise a few listings and see how many searches these um, item specifics are actually getting. So you can see why they are important. So for instance, here is a example of a, like, I think it was a battery charger. And you can see like some data points like connectivity has had close to 40,000 searches in the past month. You can see things like the amount of items included have close to around 20,000 searches. So you can imagine if you don't have that attribute in your listing and people are clicking on them, you're potentially losing out on those 40,000 searches or those like 20,000 searches. So again, it's really important where you have these, add them to your listings. Um, there are some that are more relevant than others, which is why being able to revise them and have a look at these, you can actually see which ones here for yourself are gonna be more relevant. And then I guess having a look at a search, going back to those item attributes, you can actually see here what they relate to when we do say a search for address here. You'll see on the left of the search, there are a whole bunch of those attributes that relate back to the listing that we just looked at. So making sure that you have those in there will be making sure that your items show up if a buyer clicks on say color, if they click on say dress length, if they click on say season or any of these items attributes that you see here, you're making sure that your item's still surfacing in that search and giving yourself the best chance to sell the item essentially. Again, a mobile, this is even more prominent, like buyers can see, um, definitely be able to do this as well, whether they're searching on desktop or mobile. And here are just a few examples we've sort of put together to show what they look like. You know, for instance, here's a mattress and some of the attributes that you would see for a mattress, things like firmness type um, features. And then for like a Nike shoe, for example, you can see things like product line, performance, activity, model. So these, they'll vary slightly depending on what you're selling. Um, but again, they're just the important key attributes about the item. So including as many of them as possible is, my, is, is essentially the suggestion. And, I guess what we will have a look at now is a, a tool that will help diagnose whether your listings are like, whether they're showing up well in search, whether people are clicking on them. And I guess whether those things that we looked at just before, which one of those you need to look at and put into practice, I guess that will help you uh, um, look at those things. So um, if you have access to Seller Hub, you'll be able to go to essentially performance and you'll see a, a traffic tool here. And one of the things this traffic tool does essentially will be able to tell you how many people are seeing your items in search. So whether you have things like the right titles, um, whether you have the right attributes, this will be telling you that because if you don't, you're probably not going to be getting as many impressions. Um, and it'll tell you things like are people then clicking on your listings and then how many are then converting to sell. But where I think this tool is particularly useful is probably when we look down at like individual listings. 
So I'll just skip ahead to that. So you'll be able to get an overview of all of your listings here, which is essentially what it's showing. But I think what, what I find probably most useful is when we scroll down to the individual listings, which is sitting at the bottom of that page. And what it'll show you essentially is that you can see how many people are finding your products in search, which is impressions in the example that we have here. So people have done a search for the item. They've seen it, but they haven't clicked on it. You'll be able to then see how many people have physically clicked on that item and the page views there, and then how many have then converted to, to sold. So you'll be able to see a sales conversion rate and a click-through rate using those metrics there. Why this is important, I guess, is if you are having a scenario where you're going to have very low impressions, that's probably telling you you don't have the right data or the right keywords in your listings because it's just not showing up in the in the first pages of search. Buyers just aren't seeing your, your listings. If you get to a scenario where you probably have a lot of impressions, like you have thousands, thousands of impressions, but you're not getting a lot of views or a lot of clicks, what that's probably telling you is there's something stopping the, bu the buyer actually clicking that listing. So this will then tell you what some of those best practices that we sort of talked about in those previous slides that you probably want to be uh, putting into practice. So if you know you're not getting a lot of impressions, you probably want to look at your title keywords. Um, if you know if you're not getting a lot of clicks, you maybe want to look at your pricing um, because potentially you're just maybe too expensive and they're seeing other cheaper listings there and they're scrolling past it. So a really useful one to use alongside some of those best practices, basically to look at what's showing up in search, what's working, what isn't. If you're using things like advertising as well, this will show you the difference between your search performance um, in promoted listings and your search performance in organic search as well. And so you'll be able to see yeah, whether your ad spend is essentially working well as well. Um, so I think one of the more useful tools that we have available on eBay for showing you what's what's working with your listings and what you sort of need to do to improve. So alongside those best practices, I think probably quite useful. Um, now, one of the things you can also do here is download a report, essentially. Um, Please explain change in top 20 search slot impressions. Maybe I'll just touch on that quickly, seeing as we're, we're sort of on this page. Um, it just means, yeah, like whether you've, you've within the period that we're sort of looking at here in this traffic, so this is just a month, whether you've gone up or down in the top 20 um, placements in search, essentially. Because, and again, again, obviously you want to be in that top 20 placements. That's the place that you're most likely going to have buyers purchase your item. If you're sitting obviously in spot, maybe it's top like 100 or 200 back several pages in search, so you're just less likely to get that, get that sale. So trying to get into the top 20 is probably the thing that you want to be doing the most on eBay because it's probably going to get you the most likely spot to make a sale. Um, just another couple examples here. Again, this will vary depending if you sell one-off inventory or if you sell um, if you sell like lots of the same item. Um, just because, yeah, if you're selling one-offs, you're probably not going to have the same amount of impressions because you're going to be regularly selling those items. But still useful just to know whether you're actually showing up and whether people are clicking it or not. And again, you can download this report. If you have thousands and thousands of listings, you'll be able to filter them sort of from most popular to sort of like least popular, I guess, ones that you're getting the most clicks on or the most impressions and ones you're getting the least impressions and clicks on. Very much more handy when you have a lot of products because like sort of going through them line by line in the screen's a little bit harder and you can't filter as easy. So really useful as well um, to just be able to download the report. And then again, you'll be able to sort of compare promoted versus non-promoted. And then finally, I might just quickly touch on another tool. Um, I know we're running like low on time here, but there's another one we have as well called TerraPeak, which I guess alongside of the traffic tool and some of those best practices we sort of looked at is also quite helpful for finding um, what is working on eBay, what isn't working on eBay, and like what will what what is a good product to sell essentially. So it's a market research tool that we have called TerraPeak that sits within the research tab. And it'll allow you to do some some searches in research yourself. So an example here that we've got might be say spark plug. We can do a search for a spark plug, and in the in this filter here that you'll see, it'll show sales for the past thirty days and some data about that. And you can filter that down by category as well to be more specific. And you can filter it down by listing site as well. So if you if you sell on multiple sites, you'll be able to see market research for those sites. But for this example, we're just looking at Australia. And again, you can do category or, or more broadly here. Now, just done a little bit of a search here for mattresses, just as an example, and you'll see some of the things that you can get here. Um, and I guess one of the call outs I'd like to sort of maybe start with with the tool is use some of the filters just to narrow down things so that you're looking at like for like inventory. If you're selling used 
items, for instance, or pre-loved inventory, make sure that you filter for that. So you're not comparing to new inventory and vice versa. If you're sort of selling new inventory, making sure that you're filtering out used, making sure that you're, you're comparing like for like. Same thing with pricing, like using the price filters are often quite quite a good idea here just because sometimes people will miscategorize products as well and they'll have like cheaper items that aren't quite relevant or you might sell at a higher ASP and that's sort of what you're wanting to look at those, those comparable items. So again, use your price filters here as well and um, use your, your format filters as well if you're selling sort of options or fixed price inventory. But why this is quite useful is it'll tell you things like what is your average selling price? So, you know, looking at that traffic tool that we just looked at, if you're say not getting a lot of clicks, you might come and have a look here and say, okay, maybe am I priced correctly? Um, this will be able to tell you things like that, whether you're in the right ballpark on pricing um, for that category. And it'll give you a price range as well there. So you know what is the cheapest to more expensive. And that'll tell you, yeah, like, yeah, what is the price range in that category? Um, also, things like free shipping. So we looked at that before. It'll tell you how many other people in your category are doing free shipping. So from a competition perspective, do you need to do that as well to compete or, you know, are not a lot of other people offering that? So that'll tell you that. And it'll tell you what are the average shipping prices as well. So it'll give you some really useful data, I think is the main call out here in terms of what other sellers are doing, what's working in that category and what pricing is, what what is the pricing that's happening on eBay essentially and how many items are sold? What is the comp competition? How many other sellers are you competing with? Um, and it'll give you some really cool graphs as well if you if you jump into the tool and have a little bit of a play around as well. Things like seasonality, so what parts of the year are things working? So obviously coming up to a peak trade period, which like some of our friends at Google will talk about a little bit as well. And with this, this will show you yeah what parts of the year as those sales happening. You'll probably see a big uplift around those sort of peak trade periods. Um, tell you what are the distributions of selling prices? Are a lot of sellers selling at the cheaper end of the scale? Are they selling more expensive? Um, it'll tell you things like that as well. So I think. A really, really useful one just to tell you what's working on eBay to use alongside that traffic tool to be able to see what's what's list working for your listings, what's working for other sellers, and then what best practices I sort of need to put together. And it will also do active listings as well. So not just sold products, it'll tell you what is currently live on eBay today. So we can see, you know, um, for this Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra 5G, the average listing price when I did this was about two and a half thousand dollars. That's the rough listing price range there. Um, and then, you know, most sellers are doing free shipping. So, you know, you would be able to sort of discern from that, okay, to be competitive, a lot of other people are doing free shipping. Um, this is roughly the prices people are selling at. Am I selling it at that sort of price as well? This will give you that that sort of data, which is, is really handy. Um, and then, yeah, I've just got a couple other quick search examples here, but I'd say really just have a play around with the tool yourself and the sort of items that you're selling. Jump in there, go to the research tab, open up Terapeak and just do some searches for similar items. Um, you do really specific searches. You can be quite broad with it as well. So like you can do something like a mattress, for instance, or you can go and put in a specific model. Um, it's quite a broad tool, but it'll just give you insights in terms of what's what's working and what's not working. Um, so thank you all for your time today. Um, really if anyone has any questions, definitely fire them off in the chat and I'll see if I can answer anything while I'm on today. Thanks, everyone. All right. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Charlene. I'm an account manager at eBay and I've been working across seller teams for the last two years. Um, I currently spend my day to day working on initiatives um, with our sellers in the home and garden and fashion um, space to drive growth and success on eBay. So today I'm going to show you a few of eBay's seller marketing tools that you can start today to give your sales a boost. Um, I hope you can walk away with some new knowledge today if you're starting or if you're starting up or if you're new to eBay. But for the seasoned eBay sellers, this probably isn't anything new to you, um, but I hope it's at least a good refresher. So what tools are available and where do I access them? Yeah, so the discount manager... So the discount manager in the seller hub is your one-stop shop for all um, seller marketing tools. The discounts manager allows eBay store subscribers to access a range of tools to set up special offers on eBay. So these lets you connect to buyers, um, gain visibility and drive sales for your items. All you need to do is click the marketing tab at the top there and then create the discount to view your options. 
So why should I be using the discounts manager? We all know that eBay shoppers love a good bargain and they're savvy shoppers. Um, and we've got some stats to back that up. So in fact, 75% of buyers do look for discounts and special offers. Um, and on the seller side, discounts manager has proven to drive incremental results. So on average, we see about 11% sales growth by eBay sellers when using the tools in discount manager. So what are you waiting for? Um, let's look at your marketing toolkit. We have four main seller tools available, um, and that is the coded coupon, our sales event, the order discounts, and the volume pricing. So I'll explain what each of these tools are, how you can set these up, um, and what are some tips and tricks to like and watch out for each of them. But you can just see here, this is an example of um, you know, what each one of these ones would look like on the site. Cool. So just jumping into our first one, our coded coupons are one of the highest performing seller marketing tools. Um, they provide buyers with a discount at checkout when using a code. Um, and this would be a specific code that you choose yourself. So it is super high performing just due to their high on-site visibility. Um, as you can see here, they do have, it does have a view you can see the view item page. Um, it does show at the top, it says extra 10% off code with code, um, et cetera. And that is the code of your choosing. Um, and then you can also see on the search results page here, you can see how much it stands out compared to a few other listings, um, you know, selling a similar item. And you can see that red text there. So the great thing about coded coupons are they are completely customizable. Um, so yeah, you can offer discounts on your own terms. Um, you can customize the discount from the discount value, whether it is private or public. Um, and you can also create a discount within your own budget constraints, such as um, putting in a maximum discount um, using your budget, as well as a redemption quantity. And it can also be shared. So on socials um, or sent to specific buyers, which other tools don't allow you to do that. Um, it also encourages repeat purchases. So you can definitely slip it in your order. That's something I tell a lot of my sellers to do. Um, you know, just print out an actual like print out the actual coded coupon and pop it into your order um, and ship that off. So when the buyer is looking at it, it really incentivizes like repeat purchases next time. So then um, something like caveat with the coded coupons is that they can be stacked on top of any eBay co-funded retail promotions. So if you are opting into one of our, you know, 15, 17% monthly retail promos, um, customers will be able to double dip. So just keep in mind, uh, make sure you like plan out your um, promotions if you don't want customers to do that. Cool. So yeah, I guess like coded coupons can be set up in a couple ways. Um, you name your coded coupon, you can set them public or private. You can choose a discount, whether it's a flat percentage off or a dollar discount off. Um, you can use limits to control your budget and you can also select your item eligibility. So whether that's selecting individual SKUs or allow eBay to automatically apply it to your coupons, I'm sorry, apply it to all of your categories, that is um, up to you. Okay, so sale events are another great way to help your listing stand out from the crowd. Um, they're great because it shows the was and the now price instead of replacing the listing price. So it does show you the actual value of the discount tool to boost conversion rates. Um, and unlike coupons that actually do need to be applied at checkout, um, sale events like you see the you see the value and the discount immediately, um, and the reduced price will appear in both the search results and the view item page as well. So in many cases, um, you know it is a great tool for sellers to drive sales and create sales history for a new stock line, but it's also a great way to clear out older stock. So just to ensure that um, your so here's how to set up your sale event for success. So you do need to offer meaningful discounts. Um, so that really means that you should really be using this tool for a legitimate, a legitimate sale and you should not be artificially increasing the product prices before the sale as, um, you know, this is against eBay's policies anyways, but also buyers, you know, they'll, they'll catch this and they may lose trust in you as a seller. So using it for a legitimate sale is great. Um, you know, you can create targeted campaigns for specific categories. So buyers are shown the relevant items. And lastly, to time your sale and align this with peak, um, peak trade periods, such as, um, you know, seasons or events. For example, 25% off laptops during a back to school or 50% off winter gear as we're going into spring. So you can kind of just see how this is set up here. You're able to choose your discount um, and at whatever 
yeah, whatever percentage discount, or you can choose the dollar discount as well. Um, the thing to note with these sell events is that listings must be at the was price for at least 10 days before it can be added into a sale event. Um, you also cannot change the discount amount or add new items to the sale once you've already created it. All right, now going into order discounts. So order discounts can increase total order value, which means more money in your pocket. So this is a really great tool in categories like home and gardens, um, sporting or fashion. I guess any sort of categories where there are lots of complimentary items and there is a lot of opportunity to cross sell. So for example, I might run a discount where you save $40 um, on every $200 you spend in the home category. Um, and in this order discount, I might put a lot of range, a range of products such as throws, rugs, and pillows. So when a buyer is shopping for a rug, they can also check out, check out the linked items in the same promotion um, and add it to cart. And plus it also saves on postage costs for both parties. So you can see here, this is what it looks like. Um, on the view item page, it says save $40 for every $200 spent. Um, if you click into see all eligible items and um, terms, then you can see the actual page hosting all of the items that would belong in this event. And then you can see on checkout, it will show the offer is applied, is applied um, yeah, $40 when you spend $200. Cool. So you can fine tune your campaign to suit your business goals. So you can choose from a variety of offer mechanics, um, such as like a spend and save. So if you want to spend, yeah, like my example there, spend for spend 200, save 40. You could also do buy one, get one free or save $20 when you buy three things. There's so much, um, you, there's so much room for customization there. Then when you review your order discount, um, pretty much create a name that will be visible to other buyers um, and then select your items and then just click launch. Cool. So finally, we've got volume discounts that give your shoppers an incentive to buy more. So volume discounts, they basically, volume pricing gives tiered discounts to buyers when purchasing multiple quantities of your items. So for example, um, you can see these shirts here. Um, if you buy one, it'll be $11.95, but if you buy two, it'll be $11.35. Um, and if you buy more then the discount value just goes down, it's perfect for, um, you know, mid to low price items with high purchasing frequencies, such as essentials, whether that's, you know, um, dishwashing tablets or whether they're, um, you know, yeah, essentials like t-shirts where you might buy multiple colors. Um, anything that you feel like buyers might need to stock up on, um, this is a perfect tool to use for that. And as you can see here, the setup is also quite simple. You can just set whatever pricing tier you'd like. So um, now that I've spoken about the discount methods, but um, I want to know how we target specific buyers. So I've worked with many sellers in the past, and honestly, a lot of sellers don't know about this awesome tool. Um, it is quite underrated, and that is newsletters. So newsletters allow you to speak to your previous buyers about your promotions. Um, it lets buyers know about your current sales or promotions, any new products you're selling, and it really helps to build a community of repeat customers. So really building that, um, you know, that store loyalty there. So how you set this up really, um, you know, you just visit the store tab and then you'll be able to click into the store newsletter. And the great thing about this is um, all of the newsletters are actually pre-templated. I think you have about six options to choose from, whether it is a welcome newsletter to um, welcome new subscribers or new followers to your store, or whether you want to alert buyers of, um, you know, new products and collections that you're having, or whether you want to send out like a coupon. That's a great way to do that too. Pretty much, um, yeah, you create this newsletter through the store tab, select the template you'd like to choose, and then you're able to add any personalized messages. Um, and you, with a few of those options, you're able to select which items you'd like to show in the newsletters as well. Review and activate your email. Um, with a few of those options, you're also able to um, send a recurring newsletter to So you can even target specific groups of buyers, um, you know, to incentivize repeat purchases. And that would be through like the newsletter tool as well. Um, but the buyer groups is what we're talking about here. It gives you a lot more control about who receives your promotions. So you can use them to build loyalty and encourage repeat purchases from buyers who've purchased from you before. Um, you can offer specific discounts. You can offer specific buyers a discount without lowering your item prices um, and also promote your seasonal inventory to category specific groups. 
So here you can kind of see what the buyer group screen looks like. Um, just in this account here, you can see that this is a yearly overview of um, you know, of your buyers. So you can see it says 8.9 thousand um, total buyers, 800 of them are repeat buyers, and then 8.1 thousand are one-time buyers. And then you've got about 1.8 thousand um, followers. And then when you're creating the buyer groups, you can basically select what, um, you can segment by parameters such as last purchase date or any categories. And then the total um, buyer group number will change based off whatever parameters you set. Um, and there you have it. So that, those are four free seller marketing tools um, and a super underrated newsletter tool that required, that is at no cost to you. Um, and they're all ones that you can start using today to boost your sales. So yeah, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, definitely a good day to be at home and tune into a webinar or for some of you I saw um, from Pilates. So absolutely love that. <laughs> um, my name's Eric. I'm an industry manager at Google and I'm joined by Ryan, a strategy and insights manager. Put simply, we work together to de decode market and consumer research and share these insights with people like yourself to inform your business and your marketing strategies. We're excited to share some of these with you today over the next 10 to 15 minutes. So our goal is to equip you with the insights and tools to have the most successful peak season you have ever had. Now, to clarify, peak season is from Black Friday up until and through Boxing Day. Now, you should leave today feeling informed and inspired about what's happening in the retail space, but also confident in how to drive growth despite the current economic headwinds. So. Before we jump into some of the data, I do want to share a little bit about where it's from. This is not just some Google made up data, right? We use a number of third party research partners such as Ipsos, Kantar, Trading Economics, RBA. Um, but of course, Google search is our bread and butter. So throughout the presentation, when we refer to search trends or category growth, this is the source we're referencing. And it's one that's unique to Google. Consumers literally type into the box what they want, giving us powerful insights into market and consumer sentiment. Um, I wanna share a brief story to kind of capture that concept. So meet Amber the Ambo. This is an ambulance. Uh, my partner and I spent four months um, kidding out and building to travel around Australia. Over that four month period, we were using Google all along the way to do research and understand uh, where to buy products, what to buy, uh, just about everything every step of the way. So for that, um, a specific example, this, this winter, I wanted to figure out a way to stay warm um, in the van. It's not something we've ever used before. It's usually just a couple of layers of sleeping bags. Um, that brought me to what is referred to as a diesel heater. Um, and you'll probably be excited to hear that I did end up buying that on eBay, potentially from one of you online here. So when I type that into Google, those are the insights that we provide. We can see the search trends upward for that particular term when it comes into the winter season throughout different parts of the world. So um, with that being said, I'll pass it over to Ryan to kick it off into Market Insights. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ryan. Uh, I'm a Strategy Insights Manager. Uh, I've looked after the retail category at Google for about five years now. So I've seen my fair few uh, Black Friday, Cyber Weekend peak moments. Uh, what I'm going to talk you through today is some of our top line headline insights across both the current economic conditions and the retail market. Then I'm going to touch on some consumer trends. And I'm also going to share with you why we think that this year's peak season is going to be uh, more different than ever before. So let's dive into the market insights. We are 64 days out from Black Friday. It's rapidly approaching us. Uh, so what I'm gonna share with you today is some of the things that we learned from last year, as well as how we're seeing consumers react to the current economic conditions uh, and how they've responded to sales so far this year. So have you already started doing some holiday shopping? Have a think about it, because our research with Ipsos suggests that four in 10 Aussies already have which is obviously an incredibly high number. We're starting to see consumers already search for things around Black Friday, the holidays, gifting, um, and it's happening earlier and earlier every year. Uh, I saw some questions in the chat earlier around timing. Uh, we're gonna touch on some of those timing uh, 
insights in today's presentation. So Aussies are really starting to think about peak season. They're starting to plan their purchases a lot more. Uh, and it's interesting because it's happening during a time of increased economic uncertainty. So naturally, uh, the RBA and the ABS, they report inflation based on a year over year percentage number. We're currently looking at about 4%. And if you looked at this chart, only, you might think that um, actually inflation is easing and maybe consumers are feeling a bit more positive. Well, actually, these year over year numbers compound. And if you look at core consumer prices, we're actually up 16% uh, since 2021. So it's much harder for consumers out there. And we are start starting to see them change the way that they shop in order to deal with increased economic pressure. We're seeing this uh, equation play out when it comes to price sensitivity and more intentional shopping. Uh, these numbers are from uh, research that we've done with Kantar. It shows that 70% of Aussies now say that price is more important to them, and 65% say they're spending more time looking for deals. And ultimately, what that's resulting in is more online research. 85% uh, of all purchase journeys now include online research, and that's up 8% year over year. So as consumers are much more price sensitive, they're doing a lot more research, we're seeing them turn online to make sure that they're confident in the purchases that they're making. So economic conditions might seem quite tough. Uh, and if we look back at last year's peak season, so this is November to December, you can see that if you compare to pre-COVID, things look pretty bleak. Interest rates were very high, inflation was very high, and confidence was very low. We could even see consumers snapping off the stalks of broccoli in supermarkets in order to save money at the till. So things were looking pretty bad. But what we did see is if you compare the amount that people invested over these peak seasons from 2019 to 2023, consumers still spend big. So these big online shopping retail moments still pull in lots and lots of interest. Uh, Cyber Monday uh, online spending was up 70% 2019 versus 2023. And Boxing Day online spending was up 67%. So even in the face of economic headwinds, consumers still really value these big sales moments and they'll still to, uh, they're still willing to spend. In general, we're seeing that uh, these peak moments are becoming more and more pronounced. Uh, on the left-hand side of this chart, you're seeing online retail spend from the ABS since 2020 through to the end of 2020, to, to the current moment in 2024. Uh, what I would like to highlight on this chart is that we're seeing more and more peak happening in November. More online investment is happening during November as consumers bring forward some of their Christmas spending and push back some of their early Q4 spending in order to capitalize on these big sales moments. We see that behavior also reflected in what we see on Google search. So on the right hand side here, you're looking at the total volume of all retail queries that happen on Google search. So anything that we associate with retail, when people turn to their search engines and type in, uh, that's what you're seeing represented here on the right hand side. What you're looking at is just the volumes for November indexed versus 2023. So you can see naturally we see increased volume happening, but last year was different. We saw a huge jump in the volume of people who are searching uh, on Google search on in November. Uh, in 2023. And based off of the insights that we're seeing so far this year and the way in which people are more considered, we're expecting this trend to continue. So expect a lot of volume to your pages and a lot of consideration happening. When you're thinking about your listings, don't think about just being chosen for that product. Think about also helping that consumer uh, be confident they're making the right decision across the category in general. Uh, and that would be my uh, core advice. So looking at some of the sales days that have already happened this year, we're seeing that this big demand is continuing to happen. So for Prime Day, we saw peak searches of 26% uh, year over year. For Afterpay Day, we saw 16% up year over year. And if you look back at Black Friday last year, uh, retail searches grew 22%. So we're continuing to see this double digit year over year growth for those people who are looking for uh, great deals on these sales moments. What's different about this year is that there's less time. So because Black Friday falls on the final Friday of November, this year we're actually going to see a squeezed um, time frame between the end of uh, Black Friday and Christmas itself. And when you think about looking at the metrics of your store or how your products are performing, it's really important to consider this. Year over year metrics prior to Black Friday might look a little bit uh, more negative than they did last year. But just know that Black Friday falls later in the month in November. But also there's less time for consumers to make decisions, for fulfillment to be delivered between Black Friday and Christmas this year. Something key to, con to 
to consider when you're planning out uh, your investments and planning out your fulfillment of things that people buy over these peak season uh, sales. So that's just a bit of an overview and a market insights. Uh, now we'll jump into some consumer trends and why we think that this year is going to be so different than previous uh, peak seasons. Basically, it comes down to these two things. We're going to see increased competition as Black Friday evolves from just a retail event to a consumer moment. And we're also going to see more consideration as that economic pressure continues to build and Aussies need that little bit more convincing in order to make a purchase. So what do I mean by increased competition? If you take one thing away from this webinar today, something that, that I've said, I would say it's this. Peak season spending is no longer reserved for retail. Last year, we saw an evolution of Black Friday and Cyber Monday from a retail event into a consumer moment. We're seeing more and more categories be involved, and we're seeing more and more ads and sales across um, categories outside of retail. Just take a look at some of the ads and some of the uh, offers that were on sale last year. Suzuki had 10% off their cars. Etihad had 20% off flights. Booking.com had 30% off their deals. And this is really important to consider. Not only is there more, more competition now for your consumers spending, but there's just also more noise in market. Black Friday is going to be a big event this year, and we're going to have more and more businesses talking about it. In fact, people are even planning on spending outside of retail. 28% of Aussies say that they purchased from a category outside of retail last year. And we saw incredible growth in the volume of people who are searching for things like Black Friday flights and Black Friday hotels. This, again, is something really important to consider when you're thinking about the types of offers that you're putting out there and the types of categories you're looking to uh, do sales in. We're also seeing the increase of Travel Tuesdays, which was up 700% year over year. So even new events around Black Friday and Cyber Monday are starting to crop up as well. So focusing a little bit more on retail now, uh, we just wanted to share some of the top categories that we see in terms of search volume across Google Search. So this is looking at the period of tw uh, 20th of November through to the 30th of November for 2023 versus 2022. The top five categories that we see across retail in terms of volume are apparel, food and, food and grocery, toys and games, beauty and personal care, and home. And in terms of year over year growth last year, beauty and personal care actually had the highest year over year growth at 26%. And you can see how that then waterfalls down from there. Ultimately, we're seeing double digit growth against pretty much all retail categories during these um, peak season moments. But these are the top five that we see the most volume for. Uh, and we've also done an, an analysis internally with our technical team to understand what percentage of overarching SKUs across Australian retail actually have this layer of digital visibility. Uh, and we estimate that around 50% of all SKUs across Australian retail aren't actually digitally visible. So there's a huge opportunity there for sellers to increase the volume of SKUs that they have visible. And Mark's going to talk you through some of the ways you can do that later on. So finally, as I close out my section, I'm going to touch on more consideration. I've already mentioned a few times the ways in which Aussies are changing their shopping behavior, and this section really focuses on that. In general, we're seeing people spend more time making decisions, they're doing more research on the purchases that they're buying, and they're making fewer impulse purchases. If you, if you have stores that also advertise globally, you can see the global average averages below these numbers. In general, Australia is pretty much in, in pace with global averages with some areas like the reduction of impulse purchases, Australians being a little bit more conservative with their investments. Um, when, whenever we have uh, research across peak season, we always ask about when people are planning on spending. Uh, last year, about half of Aussies told us that they were planning on doing their holiday shopping earlier. Um, but on reflection, after the uh, peak season period, we still saw that 33% of people saying they wish they started the holiday shopping earlier. And it's the experience that's making people consider that. With timing in mind, we also wanted to show when we see searches for Black Friday itself. So if you look at the red line here, this is the total volume of, of queries that we see across Google search for people explicitly looking for Black Friday. It could be Black Friday deals. It could be Black Friday timing. Anything to do with Black Friday is represented in this chart. Uh, two things I'd love to call out here is that we see an earlier start every single year. So volume starts to build much earlier. You can see there last year, the first spike that we had was actually towards the end of September, early October. And we also see multiple peaks. So each Friday in the lead up to Black Friday, we see a 
influx of search volume of people searching, seeing if deals are live yet. And if you overlay the uh, top 20 retailers in Australia and when they put their deals live, it really marries up to this consumer demand. About half of, top of the top 20 retailers last year had some kind of Black Friday messaging and deal in market the Friday plot prior to Black Friday. And then the Monday of that same week, we saw that number go up to around 70%. So if you're interested in timing and when you should be thinking about this kind of messaging or these kind of deals, hopefully this slide helps you uh, plan that a little bit more. So that's everything for me on the insights. I'll hand back to Eric, who's going to talk you through how to win in 2024. Thank you, Ryan. If we were to summarize the data that was just shared into one statement, it would be that economic headwinds remain and consumers are more considered. However, we remain optimistic for the biggest peak season yet. So what can you do to make sure you hit your personal best this year? To defend against the competition, you wanna increase your SKU coverage towards 100%. If you're not there, you're not gonna be found. Number two is capitalize on key consumer interests for those high volume, but also those growing categories. If you have capability to launch sales and when demand is shifting, do so. To ensure you're considered, expand and improve shopping data to address those more considered consumers. The more data, the more information they have, the more likely they are to consider you. And last but not least, start earlier and focus on demand versus days to make sure you're capturing it. Especially as we consider the 10 day approval rate for your eBay listings within the platform, you wanna make sure you do get that submitted well ahead of time. So with that being said, this is how you should feel crossing the finish line this year. Um, I do know where we've got a little bit of time left. I wanna make sure, please do stick around as we move over to Mark to take you through some ways you can activate on these insights. Nice. Thanks, Eric and uh, Ryan. Um, yeah, so I'm Mark. I'm an advertising solutions architect at Google. I do a lot of work with our large advertisers um, kind of around the shopping space, um, kind of surrounding the campaign. So um, especially around your shopping feeds. Uh, so that's where I'll finish us off um, this session to take us through um, I guess, how Google Shopping works and how you can use it and optimize towards it. Uh, so this might be a familiar site for you guys if you've done any searches on Google. Um, generally, when you're searching for a product, uh, the first thing you'll see at the top of the page is the paid search shopping ads. Um, so these are very visual um, and impactful. So they get um, pretty good conversion rates and click-through rates compared to uh, the normal search text ads, which we have below. Um, and then, of course, you get the organic listings, uh, organic results shown below that. So essentially, anything that you're showing on eBay has a chance of showing within those paid shopping ads at the top of the search. Um, there's also this, uh, the shopping tab where people can uh, also find the paid listings, but then you also get free shopping listings as well in that shopping tab. And of course, it can run across other Google um, inventory as well. Um, but when you're thinking about your items um, on Google, it's that top bit um, where you're most likely to see it. Um, but how does it actually end up there? Because uh, when you're um, setting up your listings on eBay, you've got your product data, which you uh, list on the eBay platform. Um, and that's about the end of where you're, you're able to see it and control it. Um, but between eBay and Google, there's a platform called Google Merchant Center. And there's essentially an API that's constantly um, connecting the two platforms. So any data that you set up on uh, eBay with your product listings, that gets sent to, across to Google as is. Uh, from there, Google Merchant Center connects up with Google Ads. And from there, your listings will then show on those shopping ads uh, that we just saw before. Um, but then I guess the question is, how do you succeed and get your items to show um, on those uh, shopping ads? So uh, the first point is to ensure your feed complies with the Google Merchant Center policies. Now, a lot of Google's policies are very similar to eBay's. Um, so generally, this isn't an issue. Um, but there are a couple of parts uh, where eBay uh, merchants um, often run into issues. But then the other part beyond the policy is then optimizing the data in your feed so you can actually, actually maximize the clicks and conversions and impressions. Um, so looking at the policy enforcement first, uh, the reason for the enforcement, um, I know it can be 
sometimes be annoying as a merchant to get items disapproved um, because of the way they're set up. But you know, the ultimate goal with it is to um, ensure that the end user has a good experience um, so that people trust um, the content that's coming through and trust that they can click through it. Um, but in terms of the, how it works on the Google side, um, once the offer comes through from eBay, uh, we've got essentially automated crawlers that will check the feed and the landing page on eBay. Um, this generally doesn't cause any issues with our eBay merchants, um, but then there are also manual sweeps that can happen as well, where someone will check um, to make sure it complies with policy. Um, but with the Google Merchant Center policy, there are two main issues um, I've seen uh, with the eBay merchants specifically. And the first one is around providing the correct identifiers. Now, providing a good identifier with Google can have quite a significant impact, um, especially the UPC um, or the GTIN, so the Global Trade Identifier Number for the product. So if your products that you're selling do have uh, a UPC or GTIN, um, I'd highly recommend you include it in your eBay listing because the Google algorithm is using this to essentially work out what exactly the item is. Um, in saying that, if you don't know what it is don't, or it doesn't exist, um, definitely do not include um, the UPC as that's what will cause um, the item to get disapproved in Google. Um, and so then it just won't show at all. So better, it, if you have it, definitely um, include it. But if you don't, don't have it, I'm not sure, um, don't include it, um, just don't risk it. Um, but if you don't have the UPC, there's also the manufacturing product number and the brand, which um, help quite a bit with the algorithm. The other main issue that we see with eBay merchants is with image issues, because uh, Google Merchant Center can be quite strict around um, disapproving items because of issues with the images. So this is if the image is like too small, um, but the main, or uh, if there's like promotional text or watermarks over the top. Um, so we do see a lot of eBay merchants using these watermarks and um, overlays. And so these get picked up by those automated crawls um, a lot of the time uh, and will cause the item to not show on the Google listings. Um, so this is only with the main image. If it's if you have any additional images, it shouldn't cause an issue on the policy side. Um, but with that main image, if you've got things going over the top, that's uh, likely going to cause it to not show on Google. Uh, but that's the policy side of things. Now around optimizing your data to, um, I guess, get those better click-through rates and impressions. Um, in terms of how your uh, listing gets, your item gets shown on those um, shopping ads, there's a, essentially a shopping ad auction that happens within Google with uh, all other advertisers. Uh, there are three main factors that affect whether your item gets shown. Uh, there's the bid level and relevance to the search. So those are things you can't really impact yourself, but the offer quality is a big one um, that has a big impact as well. Um, and it's something that you can control directly with what you're putting in your listing. So in terms of what Google's looking for in a good, uh, a good shopping ad, the three main ones uh, for the listing from like a visual perspective. So having a high quality image is uh, critical because um, that uh, is a lot more visual. Um, people are much more likely to click through on a good image um, that shows exactly what the item is. Uh, the other big ones are the titles and the description. So the title, uh, Within the Google listings, you can get up to 70 characters showing on those Google listings. You can include more um, information in the title, but definitely better to front load the title um, with attributes uh, rather than towards the back end of the title, just so it shows up. Uh, and then your description as well. So on the shopping ad itself, it'll sometimes it'll try and pull um, keywords from your description to show as little annotations at the bottom, as you can see there. Um, but then it can also show the full description in the free listing as well. But in terms of the impact of all like the key attributes, there's that front end impact I was just talking about then, but there's also the back end impact in terms of being relevant towards what people are searching for. And so that's where things like the UPC um, or the GTIN can come in and also the product type. So that's like the category that you um, have the item in can be also very useful for linking up. Uh, but then also the product title. So even if your product title goes above beyond the 70 characters that can get shown on the ad. Um, having a good product title um, will also link up with what people are searching for. Uh, and in terms of best in class titles, I've got a few examples here. I won't dive too deep into this. Uh, you can check it later, but an example with the apparel that we were uh, talking about at the beginning of the session, uh, the recommended structure would be to have the brand and the gender and product type, then all the other attributes. Um, 
to try and optimize the title as much as possible with as much critical information as possible. Um, but it, in terms of title optimization as well, um, the way people are searching is often changing and people can be very different and specific in what they want. Uh, so looking at this like Noosa surfboard, um, people can search uh, for things like a beginner surf softboard or even like a redback Noosa or a surfboard wood design. So people are searching for all sorts of things. So it's important to be able to get in front of what uh, those people are searching for. So this is where I'd recommend using Google Trends uh, to try and work out what sort of uh, search terms people are using. Um, so this is this will basically show um, the big search terms that are being used at the moment. You can just Google it to find the tool. Um, but this will probably also be useful for um, just the general way that people search, even across eBay. Um, but getting on to optimization, we're also, I guess, trying to work a lot more with AI now at Google. Um, and so this is one of the tools we've been using is called FeedGen to try and optimize your shopping feeds with generative AI. Um, so this is particularly um, important if you've got like low performing titles or very small titles, um, or maybe if you even just have duplicate titles across different types of items. Um, so this is where potentially you can change all that um, with just a few clicks. And so we've got this open source tool called FeedGen. It essentially uses the Gemini AI uh, in Google Cloud to set up. So it uh, costs a few dollars, but not too expensive. Um, you can run it across tens of thousands of items if you want. Um, and it'll essentially look at what your existing feed is in a Google Sheet and then uh, try and generate a much better, longer uh, title and description based on all the attributes and um, the background large language model that's being used. Um, so I'd highly recommend checking this out if you are struggling with getting um, titles and descriptions on a large scale. Uh, and so if you want to find out more about that, I've just got the QR code down there. But um, of course, when we send you the, the deck and the recording, you'll be able to check it there as well. Um, but yeah, that about sums it up for me. Um, I'll have a look at the Q&A after this to um, answer any questions you might have. Thank you so much, Mark. And, and a big thanks to the Google team for checking it out in the rain to the Sydney HQ today. Um, we're really, really happy to have them join us. And hopefully you got a lot out of it. I have to tell you, every time I listen to that Google session, I learn something, even just as a buyer, because so many of us use Google search and Google shopping to buy stuff, um, especially going into peak season. So um, a huge thank you to Google as well as the eBay speakers for joining today. But most importantly, thank you to you guys for making the time. I know every single one of you on the call today um, run businesses, you're busy people and have a lot going on in your life. So we appreciate you making the time to sit with us. Um, and to really engage. It was awesome to see the chat light up and the Q&A light up. Um, I know 